In our latest episode, which was published on Thursday, you will have noticed that we had a potential problem with another ship and we used AIS to identify that problem. And we used AIS rather than radar, yeah. which brings us on to today's extra, which is all about radar or AIS. Which is better? Controversial? Watch the video and let us know in the comments. The last 15 years has seen a huge growth in popularity of the AIS system, both in the commercial sector and also in the leisure sector. Now, with AIS being relatively cheaper than radar, a lot of new people new to sailing make the mistake of thinking, well, I'll get AIS instead of radar. Meanwhile, there's a few old salts out there who refuse to accept AIS because they can do everything on radar. The fact is, it's not necessarily an either or situation. No, both tools are really useful, so we're going to take a look at how they both work. First off, what is AIS? Well, it stands for Automatic Identification System. Yep, and it just uses VHF frequency and GPS as well, and it's basically used for avoiding collisions at sea. Now, there's lots of variations on AIS. There's satellite AIS, called SAIS, um, but we're going to concentrate really just on the Class B system, which is what us yachters use, which first became available in 2006. So AIS uses VHF. Uh, it only draws about two watts, I think it is. It's fairly low powered and it uses the marine bands, I think channels 87 and 88. And because it uses VHF, it only really has a range of between five to 10 miles. So the beauty of AIS is the amount of information that each target broadcasts from the name of the vessel, the MMSI number, the course, the speed and the position. Plus it does other things as well, which to be truthful, uh, radar can do as well, but you've got CPA, which is the closest point of approach, which is a calculation that works out how close you are to a collision. And furthermore, this information can be overlaid on a chart plotter. So its primary use really is collision avoidance, but actually AIS does have loads of other applications as well. Things like search and rescue, um, accident investigation is, is one that I'd read about, where they might put AIS on a particular um, marine installation, like a cable or a buoy, and if there's an accident, of course, they can monitor ships uh, that have maybe have approached that area. So there's lots of different ways in which AIS can be used. Another use is security, of course, now, back in 2010, when we transited the Red Sea, unbeknownst to us, we were monitored by the British Navy for a thousand miles, was it? Yes, when we met up with them in Oman, they told us, didn't they? They'd seen us all the way from Suez, all the way down. Mm. So reassuring, we didn't know at the time. Mm. One of the great advantages of AIS is that it allows you to see objects where you wouldn't normally be able to see them, like behind solid objects. For example, last week when we came into port, we could see two targets on our chart plotter, but we could visually only see one. Turns out there was a 350 meter tanker and a tiny weeny little 50 meter boat tied up behind it. And of course you can see them around uh, mountains, providing you can pick up the VHF uh, signal um, around capes. So it's quite useful in that it gives you a real head start when it comes to approaching vessels. And of course there are internet services which allow you to monitor vessels um, through base stations. So I've got an app, as long as we're connected, as long as we have some kind of internet connection, and to be honest you do quite a lot of the time when you're going along the coast, mm. we can send out constant signal from, where, from the boat. Um, and actually on the phone we can even see other AIS targets. It's quite useful for us and it's quite useful for people who want to monitor us. Mm. So as we said at the beginning, there was um, an incident uh, with a involving AIS in the latest episode. I was on watch and I could see this boat behind and he didn't appear to be, he hadn't appeared to notice us and he was coming directly behind and I was looking at the chart and you came up and said what's going on? Uh, one of the really useful things with AIS is to give an indication of where a ship or a vessel is going to be at any given length of time. So you can see 
here, you can see the dotted line in front of the target. And that dotted line, in our case, shows you where that vessel will be in 10 minutes time. Now you can pre-configure this, you can have it where it will be in one minute time or in half an hour or an hour's time. So we could see on the AIS that our CPA was closing down, but with all this information to hand on the AIS system, we had his MMSI number and we had the uh, ship's name. Now in the past, we'll use channel 16, the radio through using the ship's name, but of course with the MMSI number, you can also do a DSC, um, digital selective calling on the VHF as well, if they're not responding verbally on 16. And that gets you straight through to them? Providing they answer it. Yes, yeah. yeah. Yes, they don't always, but no. usually then. That is just a, a simple example of how we were able to assess a situation um, very closely and be able to make some decisions based upon you know, what the all that information that we have there with the AIS system. So with all this information on your AIS system, why would you bother with radar? Because you can't, with radar, tell the name of the ship. You don't know what its MMSI number is. What's the point? Yeah, I mean, things like CPA, which you can do on the radar, can be a little bit spurious. You know, the, rad the radome on your mast is moving around. Targets can quite often appear to be moving around. It's a bit more difficult to track and to monitor targets. Plus, of course, radar is much more expensive than AIS on the whole. So before we answer that question, let's just very quickly have a look at exactly what radar is. Now, radar has been around for a lot longer than AIS. It stands for radio detection and ranging. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it really came into its own in the Second World War. Yes, although it was back in 1886 that the German physicist Heinrich Hertz, he of Hertz fame, who first discovered that radio waves actually bounced off a solid object. So with these radio waves, we're able to bounce them off a solid object and work out distances, ranges and bearings. Radar technology is, of course, used across many different industries, but it does have its disadvantages. Yeah, I mean, you've got things like clutter, interference, noise. All of these things can be both internal with inside uh, the mechanisms of the unit itself or external. Uh, radar can be jammed as well. Also, don't forget that with radar, the bigger the object, the more likely you can see it. But of course, conversely, the smaller the object, the less chances you are to see it, especially in adverse sea conditions. And perhaps most importantly is radar will only show you solid objects, those radio waves bouncing off a solid object, which basically means that if you have a ship behind another ship that's smaller, you won't see it. You won't see ships around headlands or anything. It's pretty much what you see visually is what you see on the radar. Okay. So as far as yachts are concerned, uh, radar is pretty expensive compared to AIS. And actually traditionally radar used to require its own screen to see uh, the radar targets, although we have now got around that, we can now overlay uh, targets on our chart plotters. Traditionally, again, radar didn't use data sharing protocols like NEMA, for example, but we have got around that as well. And if you remember our first radar unit, when we first <laughs> bought the boat, I think it drew, I don't know how many, it was more. good 20 amps, yeah. 20 to 25 amps. It was a massive yeah. thing. Uh, but again, with, with 4G radar, we have managed to get around that as well. So with all this in mind, why would anyone bother with uh, radar at all and just, just go straight for AIS, surely? So the first point is, is that not everyone has AIS. Now the IMO, the International Maritime Organization, stipulates that all commercial vessels over 300 tonnes should have AIS and all passenger vessels, irrespective of their size, should have AIS. But this is not always the case. It does vary from country to country. There are guidelines and rules, regulations. It depends where you are. And it's changed massively since 2009 when we got our first AIS unit and we went through the Red Sea. There's no requirement from any country, as far as I remember, to have AIS. No. We just thought it would be a good idea. And since we've been here um, on this side of the world, Thailand didn't seem to have any rules about it. But now when you check into Phuket, you are required to give your AIS details. Mm. Radar works on a very simple principle. If it's in front of you 
or to the side of you or behind you, it will pick it up and it will show it to you. Uh, and that's pretty much, that will always be the case. Yeah, there are exceptions if you're in perhaps really bad conditions and the waves are very big and the object's a little bit smaller, you might miss it. But really, it's a very straightforward piece of kit. Yeah, what you see is what you get. Yeah. Not all commercial ships necessarily turn on their AIS system. Uh, they may have forgotten to do it, inadvertently turned it off. Uh, it might be faulty. Uh, I suppose there could be a security reason. So the most important thing to remember to avoid any kind of collision is use your eyes, use your eyes. They are the most important piece of equipment on board, far more important than any electronic systems, which are great for backup, but should only be used as backup. So, which is better? Neither. <laughs> They're both as useful as each other, and we can't recommend enough using them both in conjunction with each other. Nowadays, we have the advantage of overlaying both radar and AIS targets on our chart plotters. Sometimes AIS is giving you more information that's useful, but sometimes it's radar that's telling a completely different picture. So as you say, we're using your eyes as well. With those three different systems together, you stand a much better chance of avoiding collisions. And don't be afraid to call up on the VHF mm. if you're not really sure what's going on. That applies to AIS and radar, to be honest with you. But obviously, if you've got AIS, you know the MMSI number and the name of the boat, so much easier to get hold of them. Uh, we can see something that appears to be coming at us, and there might be another one as well and uh, just get on, just say hi. The first thing we say is, can you see us? Because we're only small. And they say, oh yes, we have you. We are going to avoid you. We are going to go to port or starboard, which is absolutely brilliant. It just gives you that confidence. Just looking at the screen and hoping that they've seen you. Don't worry about it, just call them. Nine times out of 10, they quite like it. Yeah, they do. I mean, sometimes those big long crossings can be quite boring. Yeah. So it's a bit of entertainment yeah. calling up on one six. There is one other thing that I think is worth mentioning, and that is right of way mm. versus stand on, stand off. The terminology used in the collision regulations is stand on and stand off vessels. One of the mistakes that small yachts can fall into is sticking rigidly to the collision regulations and assuming that because they are the stand on vessel, these great big lumbering 300 ton tankers doing 15 knots are going to get out of your way because ultimately they quite possibly won't be able to in time. So I think the key thing here is to sail defensively yes. and at the earliest opportunity avoid collisions because that's what AIS and radar are there for. It's to help you assess situations and to avoid collisions at the earliest opportunity. Yes and of course the coal regs they might work where you are um, in your country but as you get further further to more remote places, they're not perhaps so familiar with the coal regs or they don't use them or they have more local regs. Mm. So uh, yeah, container ships, massive problem if they're not <laughs> on the same wavelength with you, but even worse are the fishing vessels around uh, these parts. They don't really stick to any coal regs. So you can be blue in the face quoting coal regs, but it's all about being seen and avoiding being Absolutely. hit. Absolutely. So Jamie, if you were pushed and if you had to make a decision, if it were to be AIS or radar, what would you choose and why? I can't buy both. No. One only, radar, definitely radar. Uh, there was a time when I did a solo night sail when you were back in the UK and it was from Kolipi to Phuket, which is around about 120, 150 miles, which involved a night crossing through lots and lots of fishing fleets, fishing boats. I thought I was going to be clever by sticking to the 40 meter contour line away from the fishing boats, but no, there were lots. And the radar, I was picking up targets that I couldn't even see with my eyes through the binoculars. And at one point I was actually picking up fishing flags. It was a calm night. I didn't see one single AIS target throughout that whole journey. And that for me is where radar beats if it has to, if it's a contest, that's where radar will always beat AIS, is because it's picking up many, many different uh, objects, not just vessels. So we hope you enjoyed that and you hope you enjoyed our take on AIS and radar. 
and why both are of equal importance. Well, not equal, actually, because radar is number one, but then you really should have two anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and if you had to only choose one, what would you choose, yeah. AIS or radar? Do let us know in the comments. Yes, so thank you for watching again, and do remember to like and subscribe. And in the meantime, peace and fair winds. That was a bit shit. For fuck's sake. And fuck off. And for fuck's sake. You can't remember all of this. So the beauty of AI, oh, fuck. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, I don't know what I'm saying. So, I can't remember what I'm supposed to. Let me read no, 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 it no. out loud, then I will remember it. <laughs> they will not let you in. No, 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 no. What? This is bollocks. Is that the end? Yep. Thank God.